When it comes to a space flight mission, I, I think everyone who really truly wants to do this, they should want to be a part of the very next mission. So we won't be flying crew, we'll be flying some mannequins and some torsos that are simulated human tissue and organs that are looking at radiation protection, radiation environment, the acceleration of the, the vehicle and how that affects the human body because our goal is for the crewed flight on Artemis II. I've been working seven years now on Artemis, on the Artemis program, and it's it's at times it's easy, easy to look, lose track of the fact that you're, you're flying, you're building and designing a spacecraft that's going to go to the moon, that's rated to carry humans, and then you, every now and then I kind of stop and I realize, wow, this is what I'm actually getting to do. The next thing going is the right one. No matter what your role, no matter what, what, what you get to do, because honestly, even if I'm sitting at home on my couch watching it on the news, or if I'm in mission control talking to the crew, you have a go to go to the moon, all, all of those are gonna feel great. And, and so whatever your role is, you should embrace that. But all of us should wanna be on the next thing smoking. Our sights are not set on the moon. Our sights are set clearly on Mars. And everything that you're thinking about today, everything that we're going to do on Artemis 1, Artemis 1 leads to Artemis 2, which leads to Artemis 3, when we hope to have humans on the surface of the moon. But Artemis 3 is leading to the rest of the Artemis program. Uh, the first woman, the first person of color on the surface of the moon, and then the first humans tracking out to Mars and putting our footsteps in building science laboratories and, and inhabiting another, another planet.